Hi, I'm Chris at PDQ.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the ASUS supply chain update, excuse me, the supply chain exploit from the update that's out there in the wild. You may have heard of it, you may have not, but if you have ASUS hardware in your environment, better play close attention to this. What's been known is that the Kaspersky Labs has uncovered uh, that the ASUS supply chain for pushing out updates via its ASUS live update software has been compromised, or at least it was compromised from June 2018 to November 2018. So during that time, if you have any hardware, or in this case laptops, that had this software running, it's very likely that you had malicious code pushed to your computers. With that being said, it's been estimated that anywhere from a couple hundred thousand up to maybe a million or more laptops have been targeted. Now the interesting thing about this malware is even though it's been blasted out to a lot of machines, there's a second stage of this malware that actually targets a very small list of hard-coded MAC addresses. Uh, I believe at the time of this video creation, it's just over 600 based off the samples that the Kaspersky Labs has been able to extract. They've extracted 600 unique MAC addresses from, I, I believe, just over 200 samples. So with that in mind, they termed this exploit Shadowhammer, so I'm going to be re referring it as Shadowhammer for the remainder of this video. The purpose of this video, however, is to show you, using PDQ inventory, how to detect whether you have ASUS Live Update software in your environment, and if you have it, then how to show which machines have been affected. So let's dive in. First and foremost, we're going to create a collection to show what machines have that software installed. We're just going to call this maybe ASUS Live Update. And the particular version that has recently been uh, patched by ASUS is 3.6.8. That's the good version. So we want to know everything that's less than that version. So I'm just going to create this collection. Uh, the name is ASUS Live Update less than 3.6.8. And I'm going to change this uh, default filter to the application name equals ASUS Live Update. I am going to add another value filter for this for the version because we want to know what versions are prior to this 3.68 or what versions are lower than. 3.6.8. So we'll create that and actually move it out of here. And we'll notice that there's a machine here called Fry. In fact, I can open up Fry and see that on the applications page that there is ASUS Live Update. It's been installed and it's at version 3.4.1. So if I were an administrator and have this in my network, I'd be very concerned to find this because it's not the most up-to-date version. And it also might indicate that this might have had malware deployed to it. And I might want to keep an extra eye, you know, pull out the magnifying glass and take a look. But fortunately, we've actually had a separate uh, security researcher who's uh, been working hard to decompile, uh, to reverse engineer the malware. And what has been uncovered so far is that in the case where the malware runs on a machine, such as Fry here, if it doesn't match that list of MAC addresses or any of the adapters on that machine doesn't match a list of the MAC addresses that are hard-coded into the malware, Instead of doing the second stage of the payload, it instead creates a file it leaves behind. And it creates that file in the C users um, and then the user profile directory. It was not specific whether it was just at that root directory or any of the child directories, so I want to create a scanner that kind of scans everything. So now that we have this ASUS Live Update one, I've identified Fry. Now let's create a collection to search for that file. Now I'm going to create this collection first, and then we're going to create the scanner afterwards. So I'm going to call this the shadow hammer detection. And then the file name in this particular case is called idx.idni. And I'm going to have an associated blog that you may uh, be able to reference uh, just in case you have any more questions or if there's more updated information after this video gets published. So please do check that out. It should have the most up-to-date information that's out there. I'll add that in the title as well, idx.idni. And now that we have that configured, you'll see that there's no machines. That's because I haven't created a scanner for it yet. So in this case, let's actually create one. Well, actually, I do have a test scanner here, but we'll, we'll create a new one. We'll call this the Shadow Hammer. And we're going to add a file and directory scanner. And we're going to search uh, using the wildcard uh, star star up here. That searches for the current directory and all subdirectories below it. So C, users star star whack, and then we're going to look for the idx.ini file. That's it. That's all we need to include in this particular scan profile, and then we're going to scan machines for that. So I want to go switch back over to Fry and run that scan. 
Shadow Hammer. Now it's going to take a little bit to scan because in this case we're taught to scan the current subdirectory and all subdirectories and on machines that have lots of user profiles that this is scanning it can take a while for the results to come back so while we're while it's doing that scan i want to talk a little bit more about the exploit itself it's the kaspersky team who initially discovered this but like i said it, it, it took place back in june 2018 to november 2018 so it's a wide gap of between five and six months of when this happens. So if you do have this software, you're likely to be compromised. Now, because we don't know exactly what is happening with this file that's left over for those who weren't the intended, or at least the apparent intended targets, pay extra close attention if you have a machine that hits uh, with this scanner. So moving back over to the Shadow Hammer detection collection that we created, you notice that Fry is now a member of that, which indicates that it found that file in one of the directories that it was scanning. So I'll open him up and take a look. We'll switch over to the files and directories uh, page here. And there it is, idx.ini, and it was found in the C user, users reg directory. That would indicate that that, was, that happened on that user. So if you were me and I were you and all that fun stuff, I would take this to indicate I've got a problem on this machine that I really need to take a good hard look at because we don't know the impact of this malware. It's very possible that it could be spreading. It's very possible that it could be called up into action in the future. And until we know more, you're going to have to either make the choice of completely obliterating this machine or just keeping a special eye on it. Either way, it's uh, something that you want to keep up to date on the news for. That's about it. Um, again, do check out the blog for more up-to-date information. And uh, we'll update the blog as we have that as well. But that's it. I'm Chris with PDK.com. Good luck.